Operation Analysis. This is an effective tool for predictive maintenance. So today in my lecture, we are going to see the challenges of industry, which may be a processing industry or a manufacturing industry. And what are the possible solutions for the challenges? And we are going to look at an overview of maintenance. And finally, we are going to conclude how vibration analysis is an effective tool for predictive maintenance. Now we are going to start with the challenges of today. So that means industry needs zero unplanned downtime. So that means so maximize equipment availability and reliability. There should not be any unplanned downtime. So that is a target of today's scenario. And the second thing is we are trying to compete with today's modern equipment with the old equipment, probably more than 40 years old equipment that we have. So what we have to do is we need to extend the machinery life because it's very old that what we have and also we have to rebuild it. And the expectation is we have to compete with today's modern technology with uh, equipment which is probably more than 40 years old. And the third one is most often in any industry, we are running our equipment beyond its design capacity. That means beyond its design rated capacity. So these are all the challenges of industry that they're facing. Okay, so what are all the solutions of those challenges? Okay, the first thing is maintenance. Okay, so what maintenance does the machine need during the next plant shutdown? So what are all the things they need to look after? Okay, that we need to know. And second thing is, can the equipment run beyond the next schedule breakdown or outage? Suppose if you have a plan to do some repair work in 15 days, you have to think that whether it can be operated beyond that schedule time, whether it is it will be in good conditions. So like that, you need to think about that, okay? Third one is, what are your most problematic machines? So based on your observation, you can come up, come out with them some idea, okay? These machines are always notorious, okay? It will always generate some problem, some issue, bearing failure or any other failure that may happen often. So we need to identify which machine is more probability machine. So which often gives some trouble for you. So that's some breakdown records, okay? So, and another thing is, are they the bottlenecks in your production facility? Bottlenecks means something, it will resist you to do certain things, okay? So, if without these machines, if you could not do anything, then they are the bottleneck, okay? So, suppose a CNC machine, milling machine is making a lot of trouble for you, then it does mean whenever the machine makes some trouble, you could not operate the entire plant. So, you have to stop the entire plan until the machine getting repaired. Okay, so you have to wait for that. These are all the bottlenecks. That means without these machines, you cannot aim for the production. So you have to stop your production and you need to think of working on that. Then only you can start production. Okay, and another important thing is have you identified your most critical equipment? Critical equipment means so that machine, if it is stopped, then there will not be any production. In some machine, if, if it develops some malfunction or any issue in that sense, production will be reduced somewhat, but it will not be stopped. Continue. Uh, all of a sudden, it will not come down to zero. So there will be some effect in the production. These are all the solutions for the challenges uh, that what we have discussed in the previous uh, slide. Okay. So for that, we need to address this issue. So the common thing is we have to do maintenance why is maintenance necessary okay so we have to operate our equipment beyond its rated capacity we need to use it even after 40 years so we need we don't need to have any breakdown so these things all comes under that the maintenance okay so why maintenance is record or it is inevitable okay avoid unscheduled repairs okay so some something should not happen in between when you do some production or anything okay then secondary damage secondary damage means 
so some parts if they get damaged suppose if bearing gets damaged means not only it is going to affect the bearing it's going to affect the another connecting element which is joined with that bearing okay so it is going to create some secondary damage also okay so not only that element if it is not attended seriously the particular element is going to damage so it is going to influence the other element which are connected to that also that is what secondary damage and so if there is any breakdown then that cost is somewhat very huge when compared to regular maintenance because you need to do that when the production is not uh, happen okay the production has to be stopped then only you can attend the breakdown so it is going to uh, occur a lot of cost okay so if you are able to do maintenance properly you can save a lot of cost okay so there are different methods that is what thing today i'm just going to discuss with you okay so first one is breakdown or run to failure maintenance and the second one is preventive or time based maintenance and the third one is predictive or condition based maintenance and the last one is proactive or prevention maintenance okay so so these are all the things so you must know why is maintenance necessary and some techniques okay some methods that we have so different maintenance techniques one is breakdown preventive and predictive and proactive so we are going to see one by one and where we are going to fit our vibration analysis in the maintenance techniques that is what the thing i'm just going to uh, bring it to you okay so the, here is a breakdown or run to failure maintenance so in this case you never look at the machine until the failure happens okay so only the breakdown occurs then you are scratching your head and you are just thinking about what you have to do okay so in such case so you are just looking the machine when the failure happen until failure happen you are not going to do anything on that okay so this, this is a common practice in industry most of the industries are uh, coming under this breakdown maintenance because you know they never look look after the things until the failure happens so here in the visual you can see the car it just gets stranded in the middle so then only the person is uh, just looking at that what what went wrong on that car so this kind of maintenance is breakdown maintenance okay so here there are a lot of disadvantages okay so you have to find someone to fix the machine in the last minute so you need to find him and you have to spend a lot of time so it, it increased cost due to last minute fixes fixes means repair works okay then unplanned downtime means it takes longer production time so you have to stop the production or anything process in between that if something happened breakdown maintenance so then it is going to be extended suppose if you want to deliver goods in 15 days means in between 15 days some one day breakdown happens what would happens it's going to increase uh, the number of days by one that means on 16 day only you can complete your job complete your task okay so it's going to increase the production time and the third one is people will be stressful in such environment okay if company practice breakdown maintenance until something happen they'll be free but when the breakdown happens it becomes stressful environment because here in the picture also you can see how stress he is because he may supposed to go to some place or some hospital or anything like that but because of the vehicle uh, breakdown so he is so stressed so it creates stressful environment okay the more severe failures affecting other parts or machinery so sometimes we may think that the parts which gets damaged is very small one it's very cheap like that we may think but often it affect the other elements which are related to that it may be catastrophic catastrophic means something very serious damage to the plant and another thing is if you practice this technique you need to have many more spare parts in your inventory inventory means the stock okay so you have to have a lot of spare parts in your hand then only if something happen uh 
during breakdown then you can just get access to that parts and you can just replace okay and the last thing is so it's a huge issue that's because worker safety because something if if something catastrophic things happens is going to affect the people those who are working there okay so these are all the key disadvantages but still it is suitable for some cases where means so this technique which is suitable where the shutdown does not affect the production or the material cost if you think it does not matter then you can still rely on this kind of technique okay um, just uh, 15 years back i visited a spic industry there in most of the processing line they have a standby equipment suppose if they have a pump they have a similar kind of pump with similar configuration just next to that one so if it ha something happen to the one pump then they will use the pump which is next to that okay then they can go for breakdown maintenance they don't just a fraction of second uh, the plant has to suffer and then they will connect it with the another one which is which is on standby so they can continue that without uh, spending a lot of time on that so in such cases if you have something on your hand as standby then you can go for this uh, breakdown maintenance okay so so it has a lot of disadvantages it has a lot of this kind of practicality it does not require there's some initial cost on that so many companies still they are relying on this breakdown maintenance okay so i urge everyone to take a few notes on that that breakdown maintenance and where it is suitable okay so please take note on that uh, what is breakdown maintenance and what are all its disadvantages and suitability okay so good uh, thing is you don't need to invest a lot on that because only you are going to spend money when breakdown maintenance until then you are just going to do your routine work okay so you're not going to do on spending on maintenance or allocating people to carry out maintenance work so that cost doesn't involve in this maintenance okay so that's the only advantage that it has okay the second thing is uh it is preventive or time based maintenance okay so normally many of you own bike i think so oh, you might own bike car so there we have certain schedule okay if the bike covered 2000 kilometers then whether or not the bike has created some malfunction or some trouble we will take it to the uh, service station for carrying out the work so these kind of things in machinery also people will do that okay every once in a month they will do certain maintenance work they will do certain maintenance work on that particular machinery or sometimes they will do once in a year some scheduled time okay so here repair work is carried out before failure or the problem which actually occurred on the particular machinery so the maintenance it's a predetermined time intervals okay so based on that six month ones or one year ones there are some intervals you can have or based on the machinery you might have a certain plan on that based on that you are doing this kind of maintenance activity so the best example is uh, how you take your bike or car to the service station for carrying out general routine maintenance work because sometimes if something happen then we will take it to that but generally car or bike maintenance what we will do is periodically we will visit the service station based on the number of kilometers that it did okay so this is a good approach for equipment that does not run continuously so i remember one uh, example that uh, i was uh, a processing industry that is sugar industry sugar industry so normally you might uh, aware of that the sugar gain is not being produced or it's not cultivated during all the time okay the sugar cane is only available during some season okay for six month uh, uh, farmers normally used to cultivate these crops so uh, this uh, sugar cane is available so the they may do 
the process of making sugar for another three months or nine months they may continue okay and another uh, three months in a year definitely they have to uh, run they could not run the uh, machinery because the ingredients is not available that is uh, uh, sugar cane is not available so they will do the routine maintenance that three months okay so what normally they will do in sugar factory is uh, they will do all this uh, stuff that is maintenance of all the rotating parts without that identifying that whether the machine has got some problem or not they they, they won't think that they will do that routinely so once in every uh, every year they'll be getting three months time that is off season that is sugar cane is not being cultivated during that time so that three months the people will be free in industry so they'll assign this job so whether the machine has got some problem or not they will do some maintenance work on that so this kind of system used to follow this preventive or time-based maintenance because they have they have to shut down these three months though so on that time they will do the maintenance activity for all the machinery that they have okay so here what are the key disadvantage is so maintenance task is too yearly sometimes okay sometimes the machine will be in good condition but some parts supposed to get changed because the time interval may come so because of the time interval you used to change that in automobile service also they will do that okay some uh, uh, spare parts or spark plug are like that they used to change it in every uh, say uh, 2000 kilometer or 4000 kilometer like that they used to change but it may have certain life after that okay so it may it may not be that bad to change it as quick as possible it may have some certain life so sometimes maintenance may happen too early or sometimes it may be too late also okay so sometimes some failure might have happened before that maintenance took place also that is also possible because you have a certain time what? interval okay so within six months six once in a six month only i will do maintenance in between that i am not going to see what is the condition of the equipment that i am not bothering about so this is what that major disadvantage of this one so the another thing so as i discussed in the previous things so perfectly good machines are sometimes over repaid okay so it may have certain life but though because i supposed to do um maintenance these days or once in a six year uh, once in six, uh, six year or once in three year or like that the time period is there because of that i'm doing so per something may happen like that perfectly good machines also sometimes over repeat okay so this technique is also mostly followed in a lot of industry because they have certain time schedule for doing maintenance work based on that time schedule they used to do the maintenance work so here people don't think or don't uh, get an idea about whether the machine or the equipment or the parts in the equipment has got some life or anything like that they never bother about that based on the interval okay based on the time interval they will do this routine maintenance work so the third uh, type of uh, maintenance technique is it is a predictive or condition based maintenance okay this is what the thing we are going to learn from this course you are going to learn condition based maintenance technique okay so here maintenance activity is only we are doing only the failure is detected okay if some functional failure is detected then only uh, you are doing some maintenance okay until then you don't do any maintenance work on the machinery so just like that some indication so doctors use x-ray or some scans to identify some potential failure in the human being okay they used to check heartbeat okay so whether our heart is functioning up to the expected level so like that they have certain tools suppose if you take a doctor they have a stethoscope they have the facility to scan your entire body uh, to check whether your heart is functioning good or bad like that some missionaries that give some performance indication of our human being okay so if lungs are not performing they will do some 
uh, corrective measures so like that so this maintenance is also similar to that of uh, what doctor is functioning okay so we have to look into the machine actually what is exactly the potential failure and how quick it may act occur so something like that we can identify the condition of the machine so first we have we have to do the condition monitoring then we have to access the health status whether it can survive for another one year whether it can survive for another uh, two year like that we can assess the health status of the machinery okay and then which is the failure thing whether if suppose in a rotating machinery whether bearing is a failure or any unlooseness looseness is there so i have to make it fit or some unbalancing is there like that where it is exactly the issue that i have to tackle with like the doctors use diagnosis something like that okay your heart is something that we need to look after okay so something like that you need to identify the failure mode then you need to act accordingly so what's the great news is it has got a lot of advantage so first one is there's no surprise downtime okay so you don't need to stop in the middle because you know what is the condition of each and every machinery that you have in plant so you don't need to have a surprise downtime okay and the second thing is no unexpected failure okay so there is no unexpected failures and secondary damage all maintenance everything is planned so it seems sounds good huh so it has got a lot of advantage then why don't all of the companies they are just going for this kind of maintenance practice that is what the thing that you may think okay so you may think like that okay it has got a lot of advantages why it sounds great so why many of the companies they are going for not going for this kind of maintenance so now i'm just giving you some sense about that what uh, challenges that you have if you want to have this kind of practice in your uh, system okay so the first one is just like doctors has certain tools so they need to have a scanning facility they need to have a x-ray facility they need to have a stethoscope they need to have a lot of equipment that to predict the condition of a human being similarly if you want to test a machine to access its condition we need to have a lot of equipments that measure some specific parameters say for example vibration temperature lubrication like that so many process parameters are there that can be monitored by special equipments okay so just like that i can say that the, the machine is vibrating a lot okay it heats a lot like that i cannot say i need to have a vibration measuring instrument to say that exactly the machine has produced this much amplitude of vibration so that some issue is there to the machine like that i need to say and then temperature i need to have the thermographic camera okay suppose if you are performing some tooling operation on that if you have a camera then you can capture the temperature distribution okay lubrication sometimes uh, that may often happen so in your bike chain also you, you have you have to lubricate often so so lubrication is also a key issue in the rotating machinery that also needs some technique that to identify whether the lubrication is sufficient or not so what is the issue in this technique is you need to have some facility to monitor the parameters okay i need to know vibration temperature lubrication like that lot of analysis is there depreciation analysis lot of analysis is there. that is what okay so i need to have some special equipment and somebody who, who has got some idea on that particular equipment that that person can only do that okay some layman can not do this condition monitoring okay because if doctor has to access that means he has to do mbbs or otherwise uh, someone like any other um, common man cannot do that okay so if somebody who is got specialization in heart surgery can only do that heart surgery because like that if you want to assess the condition of the machine you need to have some trained person to carry out that exercise okay are you clear so we need to have special equipments and as well as not only by having an equipment you cannot do any stuff you need to have some specialized people to do this activity okay 
so the good news is uh, if you don't have then what you can think of is you can just go for uh, outsourcing these things because generally uh, in software industry you might have heard about that okay so if some some particular thing they used to outsource it to someone else outsource means giving the job to someone else to do that work okay so in a company if i don't have these equipments or specialization to do this condition monitoring what i can do is we can outsource this task to some knowledgeable person who can do this condition monitoring for me okay so i can hire some people or i can give some contract to someone else to do this condition monitoring in my plant in a particular time that i can just ask them to call, uh, come in to visit my factory so i can do these things okay so the challenges are the key issue in implementing this uh, maintenance technique in industry okay vibration is the thing that we are going to measure so our uh, studies we are just going to uh, get a sense about how to use vibration so that we can measure the condition of the machine and we can access the health status and we can identify where exactly the fault is and then we are going to rectify that okay so that's what the thing i'm just going to uh, share with you today